what I'd like to do now is show you how you import your own sample to create your own wavetable and layer that in with that. So I'm going to go to my uh, browser in um, Ableton, go into my uh, samples folder and see what I can find. I think I've got some interesting uh, effects packs here. There's a good free one by Jed Sound a while ago. There's some really interesting sounds in there. Let's see what we can find in here, just Foley sounds really. I quite like that creaking wood sample there, so maybe we could give that one a go and see how that sounds layered in with the bass. Okay, so we need to switch on oscillator B because that's where we're going to send the sample. And it's as simple as this basically, you just drag it from your browser or drag it from any Finder window or Explorer window if you're using uh, Microsoft Windows rather than Mac OS. And when you drag the sample into the waveform window for the oscillator, you'll notice that you've got these different options here. Now, I usually go for um, import constant frame size because that tends to give the best results for doing this kind of thing. Okay, so I'll just drop that there. Give it a moment to uh, process it. Okay, that took a little while, but I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so in, in 3D mode, you can, see, you can see that whole sample kind of laid out. So I'm just going to play that in isolation for a second before I mix in the other two oscillators. And you'll notice that when I first press the key, I don't get any sound at all, and that's probably because there was a very, very tiny gap at the start of the sample. But as I start moving through the wavetable position, you can hear that sound. Now, it doesn't sound much like the original sample at the moment, but that's because it's not being played back at the same speed. Partly because I need to tune it down an octave or two, and also because the wavetable isn't moving, it's just playing one slice of the sound. So if I just tune that down, you can start to hear it. Okay, two octaves down and you can just about hear that the original creaky door sound, which was this one. Okay, so try that again. You can get some really cool glitchy effects with that as well. Okay, now you'll notice that it doesn't sound very smooth and there's a lot of crackles and pops in there. So what we need to do is a little bit of editing just to, just to sort this out. So we click on this little pen tool here and go into the editor. And this is where it gets really interesting. You can really see how it's broken down the sound. You see why the first few were empty? Because there was obviously a slight gap at the beginning of the sound. And then as we move through, you can see that it sliced that sample into 256 different slices. And that's what makes up the entire wavetable for this sample. Now the next thing I want to do, and just to demonstrate why, when I'm moving through the wavetable you can hear a lot of clicks and pops, and so I can demonstrate this without moving this control manually, I'm going to assign LFO1 to the wavetable position, and I'm going to just set this to like a ramp up, so that it sweeps through the entire wavetable over the course of maybe one bar, okay? and smooth as well, just take the edge off that and peak there. Maybe uh, one bar was fast enough. Unison voicing is quite nice just to give it a stereo effect. Okay, and then back into the editor again, and the reason why we're getting all these clicks and pops is because there are lots of zero crossing errors, basically at the beginning and end of every single slice, it doesn't resolve to zero in volume, so every time it moves onto the next slice you get a slight click. So 
we can get around this by going to process and you can either do fade edges or cross fade edges. I think cross fade edges sounds a bit smoother, so I'm going to go for that one. And as you can see, that's just per fade at the start and beginning of each slice. And we've lost all those annoying little clicks, which is great. Okay, so that's our wave table. Let's go back to the um, main window. I have no idea how this is going to sound with the um, with the other oscillators yet, but let's see. Kind of sounds okay. Tweak that wavetable position a bit. So that sounds quite nice. Maybe draw in a few more little steps. It's nice the way you can just jump around to different points and just hold for, just for a brief moment and just, it just creates that really nice abrasive glitchy kind of sound which, which really gives a nice bit of top end to the bass that we've got already. I think I preferred that when it was slightly more rhythmical to be honest with you. Let's just draw in there. Yeah. I'm just pressing shift, by the way, to, to draw these steps. And then double click on them to delete them. Okay, I think that sounds nice. Let's hear that one on its own again. Really nice granular kind of sound. Maybe give it some more unison. Okay, you're cool. So back to our original bass oscillator. And the sub as well. I mean, we could try something interesting like assign the same LFO that we've assigned to the wavetable position for the imported sample on oscillator B to control the wavetable of oscillator A. That could be interesting. I'm not entirely happy with that scream wavetable at oscillator A, so I think I'm just going to audition maybe one or two others to see if we can get a better mix. Tiny bit of panning could sound good. Bring our foley sound up a little bit. Yeah, it's a really nice thick sound. Okay, cool. So it's just a very open, rolling kind of sound at the moment. So I think we should add some kind of filter to, to try and give it a bit more interest. So Let's just switch on the filter and oscillator A is going to the filter to begin with. Probably put it on fat mode. And then probably use envelope 2 to control the cutoff point.
Okay, so if I root oscillator B into the filter, we lose most of that top end. So I might try a different filter, like a like a notch or a multi-filter or something. And instead of using a um, envelope to modulate that filter, I might actually try using LFO too. So we've got that constant movement going on. So it's trigger, so it's triggering with each note trigger. And with the, remember with the multi-mode filters, this also becomes a filter frequency control here. So I can assign the same LFO to that and maybe have it doing the same kind of thing but going in the opposite direction. So we've got two notch filters passing each other. Add a bit of drive, a bit of stereo width with the panning. I quite like the way that one sounds. It's made, it's made it sound really, really interesting. Um, we bring up the sub a bit. Maybe take the mix down slightly on that filter. It sounds a little bit too obvious at the moment, so I'll just take that down slightly. So let's just quickly review the patch. Okay, so we've got the um, sub just providing that nice weighty low end. We've got our imported sound, which began like this. And we've used LFO1 to modulate the uh, wavetable position of that one. And then we've got our main bass oscillator, which is using the wavetable called Shrat.